Hi, Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with a word from God. First, I'm going to read God's word from Joel chapter 2. Then we will follow with Pat's Two Cents. Now, I hope you guys can bear with me on this because I know a lot of people don't have much interest in the word of God. But this is really a good description of what's happening right now in our day and time. And we need to know how to handle things. Listen to this. Starting at verse 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off you. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea. And his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit. The fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten the cankerworm, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which I sent among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids and those in those days will I pour out my spirit and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillar and smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. We have such consolation from God that he is with us in every way, on every side. Oh my goodness, we we don't realize how much God has stacked the deck in our favor. He is so de dependable. He, he is so mindful of us. All he asks of us 
is to obey his word, to trust in him, to seek his face, to call on his name, to honor him in all our ways. Oh, if we could just understand how much God is pulling for us and what a a, a, a supernatural divine protection he has promised for his people. Be encouraged here. Be encouraged. God has us in his sights. He knows what's going on. He knows what it'll take to keep our needs met, to keep us safe. And listen, this is some more Pat's two cents with a little advice mixed in with it. Y'all folks that got problem with other people of God, stop it. Stop judging. Stop gossiping. Stop uh, naysaying. Because God wants us to be one. He wants us to be on one accord in his unconditional love. We should have no schisms in the body. Divided we fall. United, we stand. So let's remember not only to be united with God, let's be united with each other. Every dream I have ever had, every prophetic dream that God gave me about divine protection for the saints involved the saints being divinely united and together. God bless you.